I had the good fortune yesterday to spend some time yesterday morning with President Obama and Leader Pelosi. We had a very good discussion about our goals of the coming year. And we do have goals that are extremely important to the American people, the middle class. It's an election year, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't get our work done. We need to fund a government in line with the bipartisan budget agreement that is part of the law of this country. And that will help our country, our economy grow and help the middle class. We certainly should pass bipartisan energy legislation. The bill on the floor is, that has been worked on so hard by two of our fine senators, Murkowski, Cantwell, is a good bill. And we need, there are some amendments that should be added to that, but it's a piece of legislation that really is good for the country. It's something that we've tried to do. A large part of the bill is the so-called Shaheen Portman bill. Remember, we went to this several times. And each time we got to it, they said, we've got to do this. We know it needs to pass. We'll work with you. But you know what? The sponsor, Republican sponsor of the bill, voted against his own bill. So we want this legislation to pass. We feel it's our legislation. We're a responsible minority. We believe in getting things done. And I hope we can get this bill passed. It would be good for the country. <clears throat> the Puerto Rican debt crisis is something we need to address. The Speaker has told me, he's told the Democratic leader in the House that he wanted to get something done on this soon, but soon is here. This is something that needs to be done. My considered opinion, and I've talked to my staff endlessly about this, I spoke to the President yesterday and my staff. There was an important meeting here with various uh, senators and House members yesterday. I think the only thing that's going to work is allowing them to restructure their debt. All this other stuff is simply not going to do the deal. Um, we have large, very, very moneyed interest who invested pennies in <clears throat> Puerto Rico and they want, for that penny they invested, they want hundreds of dollars back. <clears throat> and that's the truth. So we need to restructure that debt. <clears throat> we also certainly need to do something about our criminal justice system. We have bipartisan agreement that something should be done. And we're not there yet. There's a few uh, curves in the road we still have to get around. But it's something that the country wants and it needs. We also, let's talk about nominations. It is truly outrageous what is going on with no approval of nominations. Not only those we have on the Senate calendar, but hearings that committee chairs, Republican chairs, refuse to uh, hold. I'm going to talk just a little bit about those nominations that deal with national security. There are lots of them. Here's a few. Adam Zubin, Under Secretary of Treasury. His job is to work in the international financial community on sanctions and doing things to stop for directly ISIS from doing things with their money. Their money sources have been hurt significantly with what has taken place with uh, the reduced territory. Our oil facilities are basically gone. Their money they stole is not, don't have much of that anymore. This is an important position and it would really be, we would be able to put the cramps on the ISIS money by having him approved. He's been waiting forever for a simple hearing in the Banking Committee. Tom Shannon, well known in the diplomatic community, Under Secretary for Political Affairs, important. John Kerry says he would be so very, very important for the many, many things that John Kerry is responsible for doing. He needs some help. It's hard to comprehend that the State Department does not have a lawyer. They do not have a lawyer. They do not have a legal advisor. And that is Brian Egan, Under Secretary of the Navy, Janine Davidson, no. Secretary of the Army, no. Eric Fanning, Jennifer O'Connor, General Counsel for the Department of Defense. Not only does the State Department not have a lawyer, either does the Pentagon. 
Todd Weller, Assistant Secretary of Defense for Manpower and Reserve Officers, uh, extremely important. Senator Durbin, who's responsible for uh, the appropriations chair of the funding for the military, he knows how important this is. The Secretary of Defense knows how important this is. But no one, the Republicans aren't getting the message. They talk a good game about security, but things just like this, they're not doing. So we, we need to focus attention on that. We're going to do everything we can to focus attention on it. They are making, the Republicans are making us less safe by refusing to bring these nominations up for a vote. They're making us less safe. We've made a commitment to going after ISIS, and each of these nominees would assist in these efforts. So why aren't Republicans scheduling votes to confirm them? Only an effort to try to embarrass the president. It's not embarrassing the president. It's hurting our national security. Last year, we confirmed the fewest nominations of any first session in many, many decades. We can't continue this pattern. It's not good for the safety and security of the people of the United States. We can't do without Republicans setting the schedule that we, on the floor. We can't do it without them, and they are unwilling to help. Remember, it's affecting the national security of our country. Thank you very much, uh, Leader Reed. In April of 2009, a medical doctor in Boston wrote an article in The New Yorker. His name is Atul Gawande, and the article was about solitary confinement. And I read it, and I was impressed. I called him and scheduled a hearing in the Judiciary Committee, talking about the standards for solitary confinement in the United States. We not only have more people in prison per capita than any other country on Earth, we have more people in solitary confinement than any other country on Earth. After two hearings, the Federal Bureau of Prisons decided to move forward with significant reforms when it came to solitary confinement. We reduced the population over just a few years under President Obama by 25 percent. They are looking closely to make sure we don't put people in solitary confinement who are juveniles, suffering from mental illness, or particularly women who are very vulnerable in that circumstance. This week, President Obama has announced a new policy for our federal government. It's uh, putting into writing by executive order exactly what we are striving for, to make sure that solitary confinement is only used in the rarest of cases where there's no other alternative and we carefully monitor those who are in prison. The reason I bring that up is because one of the issues that Senator Reid raised was this issue of criminal justice reform. This is a major issue. The President identified it in his State of the Union address as the first priority when it came to an agenda for this year. The good news is we have a good bipartisan bill. The lead sponsor on the bill, Chuck Grassley, Chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee. I've joined a number of Democrats, including Senator Leahy and others who are supporting the bill as well. Senator Cornyn is a co-sponsor of the bill. Senator Whitehouse. It has strong bipartisan support, was reported on the Judiciary Committee 15 to 5. 15 to 5, a strong vote coming out of the committee. Now we're hearing some echoes and rumbling that, well, maybe all of the Republicans are not for it. Well, I can tell you all are not for it. One presidential candidate from Texas, who will go unnamed, showed up at the committee and voted against it. We can't wait until every Republican signs on. What we need to do is move forward for an important bill that will bring real reform to our criminal justice system at a time we desperately need it, and it's a bipartisan bill. The last point I want to make to this, the next time some, someone from the other party stands in front of this mic and starts railing against government regulation, I hope you will raise two words to them. Flint, Michigan. We just had a presentation by Senator Gary Peters about what happened in Flint and what he and Senator Stabenow are trying to do in response. Up to 7,000 innocent children have been poisoned because of lack of proper government oversight. That is government regulation. It's government regulation which they desperately needed and clearly did not have enough of. Well, as the leader said, we shouldn't let the fact that we're in an election year slow us down. Congress shouldn't simply throw in the towel. In fact, we have a long list of issues to address this year, and our Democrats are committed to working with our Republican colleagues. I want to underscore one point Harry made, because it's the mirror image. 
We had the Shaheen Portman bill a couple of years ago. It was blocked by the Republicans, and it was well known why. Because Gene Shaheen was up for re-election in a vulnerable seat. Now the shoe's on the other foot. Senator Portman's up for re-election in a vulnerable seat. Are we saying block the bill? No. We're letting it go forward. In fact, uh, it has bipartisan support, Senator Murkowski and Senator Cantwell leading the charge. I think that shows you in a nutshell the difference the commitment to moving the country forward, to avoiding the gridlock, to avoiding the polit political games that so, so dispirit the American people. Another issue we have to move forward on is Puerto Rico. It's a full-fledged crisis going on in Puerto Rico now. If Congress doesn't act and give Puerto Rico the chance to restructure its debt, schools will shutter, utilities will be switched off, the sputtering economy will grind to a halt. It will be a nightmare, a nightmare. And Senator McConnell at this very podium a few minutes ago said he wants a solution that doesn't cost money. There is one. Allow Puerto Rico to declare bankruptcy. It's a territory. It's been constricted the way other areas, other, the states have not. And you can get broad support from our caucus uh, on that issue. We hope that Senator, uh, that uh, Leader Ryan, Speaker Ryan, who originally voiced some positive notions at the end of last year about this, will move forward. Otherwise, Puerto Rico is going to be a huge problem, and it's going to end up costing us, people in Puerto Rico or citizens of America, much more money. The way to solve it, a stitch in time saves nine, allow them to restructure through allowing them to go through bankruptcy. And um, so, so if Republicans are wondering where along the road they should begin to take this issue seriously, they ought to look in the rearview mirror at what they said a while ago. Another issue, we hope we can move forward on the appropriations process. And we have the same goals as last year, two of which have been achieved. The numbers, sequestra the numbers are significantly above sequestration for the upcoming year and defense and non-defense get 50-50 increases. We're sticking with those. Republicans agreed to those. It would be malpractice to this nation if they tried to back off. But the other point, of course, is no poison pill riders. We can have a smooth bipartisan appropriations process if they don't allow the few ideologues to just ruin it by sticking in poison pill riders. In the past, they went along with that stuff. In December, they didn't. We hope we can take, take, keep, take up where we left off. They shouldn't just pass the bills they want to pass and leave everything to be lumped together in a CR. We want to do each bill separately. We'll debate them on the floor. Bipartisan support. The number's already set. And no poison pill riders. Finally, as Harry mentioned, this uh, backlog of nominees makes no sense. It is, it is, it is the height of hypocrisy to go to the floor and say we have to have more security and then block for no reason the people who are in charge of making sure we have more security from positions and Harry named all of them. Finally, criminal justice reform is a place for bipartisan support. We're ready to move forward. We're waiting for our colleagues once again to resolve their internecine disputes. So we have a long list of things we can get done this year. We can take take up here in 2016 where we left off in December 15. Bipartisan support, moving things forward, no side gets everything it wants, but no side stands up and says we're going to block everything. Well, we have all seen the kind of progress that we can make when we work together. As we all know, last year Democrats and Republicans broke through the gridlock and passed a bipartisan bill to finally fix the broken No Child Left Behind law. And now we owe it to families that we represent to build on that work. Here is one example. Democrats and Republicans should be able to work together to address one of the most pressing issues that is holding back too many students and families in this country. We need to make college more affordable and make sure students can graduate from college without the crushing burden of student debt. Democrats have a plan to do it. Among other priorities, we believe that borrowers should be able to refinance their student loan to today's lower rates. 
and we should increase investments in need-based aid like Pell Grants, which were so important for my brothers and sisters and I, and millions of families just like mine, to afford college. So many people across the country want to earn their ticket to the middle class through higher education. And I sincerely hope that this year, Republicans will work with us to help them succeed. And that's just one example you've heard many today, where we're hoping that Republicans will allow us to work together and get things done. I know that my Democratic colleagues and I are ready to make sure that we fight to make sure our economy is strong uh, and help the families in this country. And we hope that they work with us to do that. Any questions? Senator, yes. Uh, Senator McConnell said earlier that he was hoping that they hope to get some kind of legislation to be with opiate addiction finished by the end of the year. Considering the Trump data schedule that you have, considering that you guys have a priority on passing appropriations bills individually, do you think that it's a viable option to actually pass? I personally think it would be a shame to wait till the end of the year. We should be moving on that now. It is a scourge. And the only way it can be resolved is with legislation and it shouldn't we shouldn't have a target at the end of the year we should have a target as soon as possible no uh, we had a good discussion in our caucus today in a meeting I had earlier with my leaders um, no I, we we have a number of amendments we would like to offer I think one of the amendments that Liz uh, certainly dealing with uh, the issue is what we do about Flint. We have a situation there that, as Senator Durbin mentioned, is really, really frightening. In an effort to save a few dollars, uh, the governor who, who took over the city, basically, had his city manager uh, save a few bucks with water and in the process poisoned lots of people. We talk about the kids. You know, drinking large amounts of lead kills people that aren't kids and makes them sick. Uh, so we're going, to t we're, go we're going to focus on that. We want something to be done because this is an issue that is going to come back. We have a lot of communities around this country. We have lead pipes and um, a very deteriorating water system. So we're going to, well, that's something we want to focus on for sure. Yes. Yes. What do you what do you say? He said you're, you're a good guy. You're one of the Democrats who could do business with. Well, oh, I remember the good old days when he did a fundraiser or two for me. Any oh, issues that you worked with? What's that? Have you worked with him on any particular issue? Look, we we we've gotten along fine. That was before he was running for president. I'm I'm uh, with that uh, bunch of people running. I'm kind of pulling for him. You don't like that, Chuck? What's that? At the White House yesterday, did you have any discussion about the uh, Trans Pacific Partnership? Yes, the President mentioned that briefly. Um, when I'm around, it's a good way to talk about it briefly, okay? Senator Murray, do you have a different opinion? Well, we'll see what this year brings. Uh, McConnell has said he has not, he's not going to bring up yet, and we're waiting. Yeah. On a serious note, I told the president, you don't have a problem with it. It's not a Democratic problem, it's a Republican problem. They're the ones stopping it from coming up. And every, everybody knows I don't like it, but I'm in a, likely in a minority. Yes. Hey, listen, all you folks should understand that uh, I was just trying to be funny with Donald Trump, and obviously it wasn't too funny. I could, I, Schumer kicked me in the back of the leg. Uh, and a few other places. Yes, a few other places. A little, little higher than the leg, OK? Um, uh, I am watching with uh, pleasure the Republicans fumbling around. It is, it is a, a cadre of people who are really um, a mismatch for the President of the United States. And uh, we in Nevada, of course, are going to look at this closely because we, ha we have a caucus out there um, soon after New Hampshire, both a Democratic uh, caucus and a Republican caucus. And I just, I just think that uh, 
it, is, it has made a mockery of our Republican Party. I can't imagine, I can't imagine uh, these Republicans who serve here in the Senate are obviously afraid of Trump, they're afraid of Cruz, I don't know who they're not afraid of, and uh, because they're certainly, uh, by their silence, are acknowledging some of the awful things that he and the rest of them have said. I'm gonna give a speech in the next day or two. I had my staff go back and look at their, uh, what they've said about national security. I mean, it is, it, is, it is enough to frighten you as to what they've said about national security. Carpet bombing and all this other stuff. So I'll, uh, when we, if it doesn't snow again, I'll be out soon to talk about that. Thanks, everybody.